I am not much of a crafty person, but all of this material I have picked up all over the place on the internet, so you don't have to worry about taking notes. Uh, hopefully not anyway. With me, I do not like wasting and I do not like throwing away stuff, and it has bothered me. I've always reworked the cabinets. That was easy. My problem is, you know, most of us know wax in the foundation form, in the cabinets, or like that, when we get done, they've either hives have died or it's time to rotate the wax out. And that was the part that bothered me, knowing that there was wax sitting in these old combs that I couldn't do anything with. The cappings aren't a problem. Once you get them out of the hives, they're pretty easy to handle. You can either use a solar melter. Um, a lot of different ways we'll talk about, but the idea is to get this wax is another form of income. You can handle it bulk like this, and we'll talk about places you can take it if you don't know of any. You can do it in blocks to sell locally. If you're real fancy, you get high end, or you can make things with it like the candles. Now, the thing that gets me is there's three places I know of in this area you can, or ways you can handle it. Highway 226, now all these figures are from last year. You could get $1.50 per pound of your wax, clean cakes of wax, whatever shape, as long as they're clean, melted together, they'll give you $1.50 a pound for trade-in. Brushy Mountain, well, you can go on the line, pull off this form, and it will explain to you how to figure out how much of a break you get. When I sat out and figured it out, again, for last year, you get uh, $4.45 to $4.75 per pound of wax. Now, they will sell you wax at $5.75, so they're not losing money on that. The neat thing is, you can sell an ounce of wax for a dollar an ounce. Now, if you do it in bulk, I'd sell it for a little less. If you get creative, now, just out of curiosity, I tried this at the State Fair, uh, not State Fair, at Cleveland County Fair, just to see what would happen, and people would buy it even though they didn't have an idea of what in the world to do with it. That was these nice little shapes like that. I'm going to try something like this that's actually decorative and see how that goes next year. If you get creative, Try some of these other things. There are folks that make it. You may be able to connect up with people like that that will make stuff with it. The easiest way is a simple solar melter. If you, if you haven't done anything with it, this will get you into trying for two or three bucks or absolutely free. All you need, and you don't have to do this big. I tend to over-engineer stuff a little bit. Piece of glass styrofoam container. That's all it takes. I got all of this free. I have been known for dumpster diving, too. If you want a thick one, check with your doctor's offices, especially these bigger ones that get the medicine shipped in. If you get Omaha steaks shipped in, they come in pretty thick. But you can go down to Walmart and get one of those cheap styrofoam containers, put a sheet of glass over, and do it. What? Sorry about that. The easiest way, they talk about here tying a string around it. I get frustrated with that. You can use cheese, cheese cloth. Rubber bands will work one time and the heat will destroy it. You put this thing out in the sun, like today at 80 degrees, it will get so hot you can't handle it. So what I have moved to is just taking some cheap plastic container, put about half inch of water in the bottom and then take these paper clips and just clip on a coffee filter. You get one use out of the coffee filter and then you take your wax, the cappings again, remember you rinse these out afterwards, 
Well, I just ball them up in little balls, stack them up there. In the morning, I set them out. If I'm around, I just continue to rotate it so the sun hits this as much as possible and it melts the wax. You end up with two things. You end up with about this much wax from a ball this size. Now you remember you've stuck six or eight balls on top of that and with the cappings you get a beautiful yellow wax. Um, the problem with that is you've still got some leftover to slum gum. If you feel it, it still has that feeling of wax. This will only remove 60 or 70 percent of the wax out. I took a large collection of that and put it in the steamer over here. Uh, it's actually working. And ended up getting about this much wax out of it. That was after the solar melted. Now, the thing I am working on now in the steamer is supposed to help some with the old cone remove some more. It still is not real efficient, but it's about the best I can do right now. The problem, the reason you don't want to mix old cone with your cappings is all those cocoons in the old cone will act like a sponge, and you can get it as hot as you want, and all you will have done was melt the wax out, and the cones will suck it in. The steam extraction helps some. What I want to do, and I haven't figured out how to do this yet, is to compress it. One way some folks do a little bit of this, well this is a, a, you can step up from this. Most people when you do a lot of solar melting you get a frame like this, it holds up better, you can put more wax in it, um, and you can get those plans off the internet anyway, anywhere. One step some people will get to, and it doesn't have to be this big, this is just a large scale, they'll put the wax or the cone in the burlap bags, put a good sized rock or weight in it to set it down in the bottom, cover it over with the water and heat it, and a lot of it will work up. And you'll have a surface disc of wax, depending on the size of your container, looking something like this. Realize your wax colors will change depending on the age of the wax, depending on the pollen, all of that will change your wax colors. Once you get it out that way, you'll probably have to refine it again. The biggest thing to remember with any of this stuff is, if at all possible, do it outside. You're going to make a mess. You're going to get it on your floor, you're going to get it on your stove, and somehow you're going to get it on the ceiling. <laughs> and I let you, I, I still don't know how I did that, but I did. Second rule, do not use your spouse's good kitchen stuff. If you want to use your spouse's kitchen stuff, if you're smart, you'll buy her something better before you use it. Because if you use it and she sees what you've done to it because this stuff doesn't come clean good, you will be buying her a lot more new stuff and you will be in hot water. Do as much of this outside as you can. I don't know how many of you have seen those pictures of the deep fat fryer where they drop the frozen turkey in and it blows up and burns the place down. Wax isn't much better than gasoline when it comes, so do it outside. Not just for the mess, but for the safety of your house or wherever you're doing this. The steam melters, this is one of the less expensive ones. I'm cheap, i got to play with one. It's a small steam producing unit and a plastic <coughs> tub with a container to hold the wax that you're melting, and it melts to the bottom. Now, you're talking $222 for that. You can go to Brushy Mountain and spend close to probably $800, and that unit works wonderful. You can take all your frames, set your frames in, steam it. It'll take about half an hour or so. You open it and then you've got to get all that slum gum scraped off and out of your frames because it will set quick, but it will clean your frames nicely. It's just an awful lot of money for most of us to spend. Maybe a club could get it, but unless you're doing a lot, 
that won't work. I was inspired to do this, to, to test and try, because of a YouTube video where a guy took a steam unit just like this. These are those um, units that you use to steam wallpaper off. Brand new, they cost about 70 or 80 dollars. You should be able to, and I got a brand new one because I couldn't wait. What the folks have done with these things, they put a solid metal bottom under the hive, they put the hive body on top, they put a hole in the top, and put this steam unit in, and put a bread pan where it catches all the wax, and they literally steam the whole thing at once. I haven't been able to make that go on my demonstration yet, so I'm afraid I don't have that to show you. Um, what I did was pretty simple, and this is all just stuff I had around, an old co uh, coffee pot, hook the steam up to it, have the filter up top. Now I use these coffee filters, plenty of them, easy to get, cheap, put the wax in them and put about three of them in the top around the, uh, in, in the coffee unit and then it drops down and in. Okay. And then it, I do this outside because as you notice the odor is a bit rough. Um, but let it in here and, and then swap out the containers as I need and just continue working them that way. I have said I don't do a lot but when you get a chance, you can more than welcome to come up here and take a look. These are the different types of things I have picked up recently. They also have, for Christmas, my wife is the crafty one. I've got to produce honey for her to give away for Christmas. And the wax she wanted to do, the 12 days of Christmas ornaments, so we use that. Um, those are all neat things you can do. In this, you will find two um, brochures, I guess, two things that we put out in Cleveland County. Uh, and uh, we've got an example. The, it's this shape on different information, but one on beeswax and one on the use of beeswax. You're welcome to take this and use it, change it, but whenever you do some programs, put it out so that they've got information they can take home. Teachers love it, kids love it, it answers some of the basic questions, and it's something to take home that won't cost them an arm and a leg. Um, my next hope is to work on, and this is in here on pressing wax, and the fees are in here. One other thing I want you to realize is I don't care where you get your wax from, it is all contaminated. The wax you buy in sheet formation is contaminated. Your cones, cappings are contaminated. Everything is contaminated. Between the stuff as beekeepers we have put in our hives have ended up in there, but even if you had a source of pure wax, it will still get contaminated because you've got to remember bees are like little flying dust mops. They collect absolutely everything. In fact, scientists use the hives to test. They use it in places like Aberdeen Proving Ground to see all the chemicals that are floating around and contaminating the environment. They use them towards nuclear power plants to see the waste that's coming in that way and then you've got all of the blow off from the different agricultural units. So it's not just us, but it is contaminated. There is an article in here by a gentleman, David Cushman, who has talked about maybe some possibilities on ways to clean it. But the reason this came to, to head was the lady down in Georgia, um, I cannot think of her name. Virginia Whale. No. Jennifer Berry. Jennifer Berry, thank you, was trying to do some research and she could not find clean wax, no matter what she tried to do. What she had, because of the study she was doing, what she had to do was finally go to pure wax, uh, pure 
plastic foundation with no wax. And even with that, she ran into problems. You've got to figure that the wax, I've heard the description, wax is like a, a liver almost for the hive. It absorbs all these chemicals and such. So you're going to need to be changing it out those every three or four years. If at all possible, take it out and clean it. And we've got the recipes. Are there any questions so far? One or two other things that I have found useful for working with wax is an old crock pot. Once you, if you use the solar melt and you've got all these funny shaped blobs and stuff, you can throw all the odds and ends in the crock pot, put a little water in it, they will melt and come into a nice smooth plug for you. Um, you don't have as much junk to scrape off, but if you do, have junk, it'll end up on the bottom and this is what it'll end up looking like. Just scrape the junk off. And this, I've scraped off most of it, but you can still see some of the waste product. It'll help you clean it up. If you're not ready for that, another simple thing, especially if you're going to do any products, is remember, if you can use a double boiler, if you have to work in the kitchen, you've got your wax cleaned and purified, a double boiler will just heat, the water will get hot, it will melt the wax, but it will keep it a little bit safer. Those are the things I can share with you on this. Any questions on any of this? Yes, sir. <clears throat> the, uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember Virginia Webb was one uh, I asked her a bunch of questions about why I was working back before. And that was the one that I she gave me the flashpoint. I'm trying to think of what it is. It's not a whole lot. It's not. It's like 176. I don't remember the flashpoint. I do know it's nothing to play she with. She said make sure you use a thermometer. I'd have, yeah, and the other thing I'd have, quite frankly, is a fire extinguisher. Just, it's not nice stuff when it goes off. That is one mistake I haven't managed to make yet. Is it like, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Is the flashpoint higher than paraffin? Plain paraffin wax? I don't know. I know there. I think it's a little bit higher possibly because I know paraffin melts at a lower temperature than beeswax does. But I'm not 100% sure on that. Yes, sir? Uh, like when you melt in a solar melter and it gets really super hot, does that darken the wax? No. This, this is what I have gotten out of my solar melter. Um, and this is about how much I get out of one of those little balls. The biggest problem with the solar melter is you end up with, with the water in the, I put the water in it to make it easier to remove out of the container. Right. And you end up with some strange shapes. I just toss it in a container until I'm done. <clears throat> you know, get a large batch and then chunk them into the, to the crock pot. The other thing you might want to consider is get a bucket and store the pieces in. You can store the beeswax for a good long time. <coughs> I use a five gallon bucket with a tight lid. Just make sure that that wax is dry when you put it up. If it is not, it will be real foul smelling. But if it's dry, you can seal it up in there. If you don't have a lot, you can store it in your freezer. If your spouse doesn't mind weird stuff in the refrigerator, um, but that will kill off the wax moths and then when it's dry you can just put it in a bucket and keep it and work it as you can. I see. <clears throat> the solar melter that you showed there, uh, the advantage of that to me, I have one just like that. Uh, you can put the whole rack in there mm -hmm. and then you don't have to scrape that wax and try It's It's a pain to clean up a rack that hasn't been melted in that solar melter. You know, uh, a 90 degree day, you can melt a gallon of wax in a, in a heartbeat. like that. You don't want to do a lot with a melter like this. Right. This is something to start with and to try to get the feel for it. But you're going to end up wanting to move to a solar melter, a, a purpose-built unit that's much more efficient. And you can put larger pieces in. Um, well, I, I've got a... 
I've got a partner of mine that he used to work with me all the time. <clears throat> and he's got a solar melter, and a temperature inside that solar melter will get 350 degrees. It'll get hot. On a 90 degree day, it'll be 350 to 400 degrees. Melting that wax. You can melt it. You can melt every rack in your, in your roof box. Every one of them in one day. And you end up with a clean, nice wax and something to sell back. And what most people end up doing, or I found that they do, is they get their glass first if they happen to have a double or triple plane gas glass window or one of these big commercial doors, and then they build the box to that shape. If it's the bigger it is, the bigger stuff you can put in it, the more you can melt at a time, makes it more efficient. Just make sure you put wheels on it or handles so you can move that joker in between. Wesley. Tim looked up the flash point is 399 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't believe you're going to eat that. And it says, too, that uh, heating above 85 degrees Celsius or 185 Fahrenheit loses its color. Okay. So it says to keep it <coughs> below 185 Fahrenheit, but 400 degrees is the flash point, so I think. Okay. Yeah, as long as you don't, the open flames are the biggest thing yeah. with the wax. Anything else? All this is up here for show and tell. You can poke, look, pick up, touch, handle. That's what it's here for. And if any more questions? Have a question. Yes, ma'am. I want to know. You, I've heard you mention several times. Now, who buys your honey? I mean, your wax. Like, say, if I have a chunk of wax. I have sold. Uh, most of it, I have been taking up to Brushy Mountain. Uh, to swap Do you out. You already have family. to have it cleaned up like that. Yes, it has to be. <coughs> So clean like this, something like this. Yeah. Now, if you're a big time commercial operation and you're talking 55 gallon drums worth, I have been told there are operations that will take that and your slum gum and all the rest to remove the wax. I have not been able to find one yet and I'm not sure that it would be very practical for most of us because of the smaller amounts. But they were, it was an aside comment in a paper I was reading that they just literally pack it up into 55 gallon drums and ship it off to render the rest of the wax out. Most of the things that we do will only get to 70 to 80 percent of the wax and there will still be wax left in it. There are chemical ways to remove the wax but you wouldn't be able to reuse it for beekeeping purposes. Um, there's pressurized press, um, a combination of both the steam and the pressure that will help remove more. Um, and there's hot plates where they literally sandwich it between two hot electrical plates. But all of that involves some extreme so if, expensive equipment. If we were if we had a big chunk of wax that we wanted to sell the brushing out, we'd have to clean it up like this. Yes. So they can weigh it. Yes. They they also grade it according to color. The the lighter color the wax, the better return you'll get for your wax. That's the other reason you want to keep your capping separated from your brood cone and the rest because it will tend to darken your wax. I've also had, uh, there's a lady in Shelby that does lip balms and all sorts of things and she bought some from me and then some was purchased from uh, at the fair, and I don't, I really don't know why. I just tossed it out there to try because they bought stuff before that I thought nobody would buy. Lord, you got wax to sell, see Tony Hubbard. Oh. <laughs> well, I did. You want to go we, local? It had wax molds in it, and we threw it to the mall. You don't need any wax molds. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. comes out in the mouth of you don't have to worry about the wax. That's why you have a solar machine. When the wax moths take over, and just melt those racks down and start over. I know you'll buy capping. <clears throat> yeah, and once you've got it melted down in the blocks like this, they don't go bad. They are still finding wax in California up on the beaches from sunken galleons that had harvested beeswax, and it is still in good shape. So. 
The only thing that you will have, and you can see a little bit of it, a white bloom that comes on the wax. It, it, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just the process of the age. And if you just gently heat it with a, a blower, like a hair dryer, you can, the, the bloom will disappear. But it, it, there's nothing wrong with it. Some people, especially in decorative items, will leave the bloom on it because they like the way it looks. You mentioned that if you put it away wet, it will have a foul odor. If you remelt it, will that dissolve or dissipate that odor? No. I tried. Um, which led to, I would not try bleaching your wax. I wouldn't use bleach. About the only thing you might want to consider is hydrogen peroxide. But the problem with that is, is it starts to remove some of the scents that beeswax is good for. And if you get the real strong hydrogen peroxide like you can as a commercial level, that can be dangerous. The hydrogen peroxide that we get from a drugstore isn't a problem, and it could lighten it up, but they're saying stay away from it. It's one more chemical and one more contamination that you really don't need. But the wax that when I had it smelled so bad and melted it down, it smelled good for a while, and then the smell came back. So getting, getting the moisture out of it afterward didn't do you any good? No, it was put it away dry. And I, I was steaming it while it was wet, just because when I found it, I just wanted to work it, and it was, it wasn't good. Now I've not used a large solar melter for that, I, and I just intend to avoid it as opposed to finding a way to handle it when it gets wet.